Okay, so let's dive back into Darktable for this second episode and back to the three photos we were looking at in the first. The photo of the bee we have already worked on, so let's work on the other two. Today we're going to do essentially the same manipulations. We're going to use exposure and filmic and then we'll export. So let's go to the first one. So I'll double click on this picture of a seascape. So, like the first time, I'm going to click on this little light bulb, which will make the picture smaller and we'll get the white frame around it. And that will enable me to adjust the exposure correctly. So, exposure. And then, let's have a look. And let's make this a little bit brighter. And get an exposure that looks okay. So, everything is um, just eyeballing everything looking at the picture and that is more or less an exposure that looks good to me that looks okay so exposure done and now filmic so for the s curve we have here the white relative exposure i can maybe brighten up a little bit I'm looking here at the white at the brighter points here, the wave on the beach. Don't want that to be too dark. Could even push that a little bit. There, that looks okay. And the black point. Now here if you notice we have an orange part of the curve. That's okay for the moment. And how far do I want to push that? If you see the darker parts here of the photo getting darker. As I push this to the right, that's too dark. Just a little bit of detail there. And that looks okay to me. I'll just check the curve. I just have here a little orange point. Won't change much to the photo if I move that back a bit. And there we have an exposure that looks okay. So we have the pipeline, which is as it was when we opened Dark Room for the first time, Dark Table. Or the dark room and dark table for the first time exposure filmic and done let's go back to the light table and that photo is ready for export let's look at this one it's a little bit more complicated this one maybe now why is this one more complicated because if you look here on the side the fur here it looks so naturally bright I might be worried that this is overexposed on the shot. I can actually check with dark table. A very, very interesting um, little button here is the one at the bottom next to the light bulb. Switch the light bulb on if I like. This one, I'll click on it, will show me on the picture if any of the pixels are overexposed. Oh, an overexposed pixel means there's no information in it really. It means that um, when I took the shot, this part was so bright that the camera couldn't cope and um, I lost information in some channels. If I switch that, if you want to have a, a look a little bit closer here, and I can see some red, that means that the red channel has clipped. That means I've lost all the information in the red channel. Now I have some purple on top here and here that means that the blue channel clipped on top of the red red and blue is purple so in these parts of the photo i have no information so i need dark table to reconstruct some pixels in those areas and give it a natural look and that is the work we have to do with this the other thing we have is this photo is quite dark so if i look at exposure you can see that on the camera i um, had a compensation of minus 0.3 EV. I might have done better to underexpose the shot a little bit more. Uh, however, what's done is done. It's too late. Um, so not only do I have to brighten the photo because it's too dark for me, but I also have to make sure, and that will be with filmic, that the bright parts of the photo look okay. So that's the challenge to come. Okay, I'll remove that uh, overexposure clipping uh, warning there, and let's um, light bulb and 
let's expose the photo correctly. You see, I'm not worried about over exposing any other parts because I know that I'm using raw data and that in the parts of the picture where there is information, I'm, I'm not going to lose any. It's all there. So globally, the picture looks fine to me now. Um, it's bright enough, so that's okay. Let's see what Filmic can do for us. So for Filmic, I want to darken the brighter parts. So to darken the brighter parts, what I need to do is move that down. If I move it down too much, you can see that I'm losing detail. It's getting a bit wishy-washy there. So why do I look okay? Well, I look okay about there. And let's get some darker parts. Of the photo case. The problem is with the dark parts, if I move these up, then it starts looking a bit unnatural. I've got the inside, the tongue, the inside of the mouth that start looking a bit brighter. I can actually see inside. Now that doesn't look natural to me. The mouth is obviously um, in the shade. There's no light, not much light going in there. So to get it natural, that natural, the mouth should be dark. I don't mind seeing a bit of tongue interesting. Let's get it natural there. And that looks okay to me. Now if you have a look, the fur here doesn't look too bad actually. Um, transition may be a little bit harsh there. But on the top of the head it's fine. On the cheek I have some overexposed parts. But there's nothing, there's no really hard transitions. So there I think I'm okay really. I'm going to leave that at that. Um, the problem is with software is when you've overexposed your photo and there's no data, then there's no way you're ever going to get that back. So the best you can hope that your software will do is kind of fill in the gaps in a reasonable manner. And I think that's okay. I don't think anyone will really notice. So that's okay. What I can show you and learn something a little bit new is about colour calibration. Now colour calibration is what replaces white balance. Um, so it's quite a recent module. So colour calibration will allow me to change the global colour of the picture. So I can move the hue and chroma. So if I move this the photo is getting redder, it's very unnatural. If I move it to the left, it's getting greener. And you will notice that there is a colour here which corresponds to the hue. Um, and as I move it to the left, to the reds, the photo is getting greener. Now the explanation to that is that this colour here is being subtracted from the photo. So if I subtract red, then what remains, what remains is green. And if I go to if I try and subtract yellows or greens, it's getting red. Go wild on this, but it's no point. If I double click, here, I'll bring it back to how it was before. And chroma here, chroma is something that some people call saturation. The real name is chroma. So if you look at this patch here, move it to the right, the patch is getting more saturated. And if you move it to the left, losing chroma on this patch. And that, I'll bring it back, double click, back to the beginning. And maybe adjust this a little bit to the left. Not much to change on this photo. So the right sound out oh, to the right is better. Look at that. The fur really in real life is white. It was sunny, so it's with the sunlight, it's a little bit yellow. Now I've just adjusted just slightly um, the white balance of the photo. I can show you before and after. So it was like that if there's no colour calibration done at all, with the colour calibration, I have a nice natural looking colour. So that looks fine to me. And then I can go back to the light table and I can export these photos. So click on the photo you want to export. I have the same settings as before. I'm going to save the file on disk in the same folder with the same file name as a JPEG, 8-bit JPEG, quality 85%. If there is a 
photo already exported from that raw file then I will overwrite it export yes go to the next one export yes okay those photos are exported so now in the folder if I check with the finder I have the raw files I have some XMP files these XMP files contain the modifications I did with Darktable which means that the modifications I do to the file are not in the raw file. The raw file is there. It is as it was on the 23rd of February when I when I uh, imported the file from the camera. It hasn't changed. All the modifications are done in the XMP file, which is a tiny file. It's 8 kilobytes compared to 58.2 on the raw file. So that's fine. Each raw file now has an XMP file, and I have a couple of JPEG files if you want to see them the seascape, the dog, and the bee we had last time. There we are. So that's it for this episode. We know, as a recap, how to change the exposure on a file, how to use Filmic to adjust the bright parts, the dark parts, and get a nice smooth transition get everything into all the colours, all the brightnesses, into what the screen can show me, and now we can export. So, um, well, next time we'll add some more things. Maybe next time we'll add a bit of saturation to the photos. See how that goes. There we are. See you next time.